Hello, and welcome to this short introduction to my Asthma Spotlight podcast. This will start in December 2022. So why have I decided to do a podcast on asthma? The answer is that although asthma deaths do not happen very often, most of these deaths are preventable. I'm Dr. Mark Levy, and I'm a family doctor with a long-standing research and teaching interest in asthma. I've been involved in investigating asthma deaths, both as a clinical lead for the United Kingdom National Review of Asthma Deaths, and also as an expert witness for coronial inquests on asthma deaths. And sadly, in the United Kingdom and in other parts of the world, these preventable deaths continue. So, like asthma deaths, most asthma attacks are also preventable. And my main aim in deciding to start this Asthma Spotlight podcast is to try and help people learn enough about asthma to be able to keep themselves safe and free from attacks. So in the podcasts, I'll share my knowledge and experience to help people with asthma to understand their disease and its treatment, and most importantly, how to stay safe by preventing attacks. Asthma is an ongoing underlying or so-called chronic disease that can often and does often flare up with attacks from time to time. Sometimes these attacks occur without any warning at all. And as a result, asthma can and often does disrupt lives of those who have it, as well as that of their families. About 300 million people in the world have asthma. And asthma is the most common chronic condition in childhood, affecting about one in seven children and about 1 in 20 adults. Occupational asthma is a particular type of asthma, which is probably responsible for about 1 in 10 of those people who develop this disease in adulthood. And that can be prevented if it is detected early enough. Worldwide asthma is responsible for over 1,000 deaths a day. And as I said, the majority of asthma attacks and deaths are preventable. And that is really one of my main aims in doing these podcasts. And that is to help people who've got asthma, as well as their caregivers, to learn as much as possible to understand how to prevent attacks from this disease. Now this podcast will provide educational health information on asthma. I will explain how it's diagnosed and how this disease can be recognized and diagnosed earlier. And I'll share information from my own experience on the different asthma medications and how they work. I will discuss how to monitor asthma control so that attacks can be detected early. And I'll share my knowledge on how to recognize danger signs as early as possible so that attacks can be dealt with in order to prevent somebody ending up in hospital with a severe attack. Now, one of the most important topics I'm going to talk about soon will be over-reliance on short-acting reliever medication. The short-acting beta agonist bronchodilators, which are called the SABAs, S-A-B-A's, these are the inhalers that are intended to be used to treat symptoms of asthma. And those symptoms include coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Now, those inhalers the reliever inhalers are usually blue and the drugs in them are either salbutamol or albuterol depending on which country you're in. This over-reliance or dependence on these reliever inhalers is in my view and that of many others one of the main reasons why many people have asthma attacks. So because the reliever inhalers usually provide immediate relief Many people believe that this is the only treatment that they need to take for their asthma. The effect of these short-acting relievers only lasts for about four hours. So it is insufficient to use these reliever inhalers on their own to control asthma because they don't work on the underlying inflammation which is caused by this disease. Now I will discuss this in much more detail in a future podcast But for now, it's really important that people with asthma should be using the preventer medication that's prescribed by their own doctors and only using the relievers for short-term relief of symptoms. 
Now, I welcome any questions about asthma, which will be discussed in future Asthma Spotlight podcasts. You can send these to me by email at asthmaspotlight at gmail.com. Please do start sending any questions you have on asthma at this stage so that I can include answers to them in future episodes. The information in the Asthma Spotlight podcast is not professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the advice by your doctor. So I will not be able to answer any personal medical questions. So please do see the disclaimer details in the podcast description and you'll also find the email address for questions in that podcast description. If you are interested in learning more about asthma, please follow this podcast and share um, the details with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for your attention.